the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about dental implants. With us, we have two periodontists, Dr. Heller and Dr. Versman. Dr. Heller, welcome to the program. Thanks for having Dr. me. Dr. Versman? It's a real pleasure to be with you today, Randy. Now, before we get into today's topic, uh, dental implants, tell me a little bit about your practice. Love to. Uh, we've practiced in the uh, Aurora area for over 30 years, Randy. Okay. Specializing in periodontics. Uh, periodontics, as you may know, is one of the seven specialties in dentistry. And what is it, by the way? What is that specialty? Well, the design of periodontics is to save the natural teeth. And unfortunately, as time has gone on, many of patients lose their teeth, and so our focus has become on replacing teeth with dental implants, which are just new biological wonders that work terrific for patients. Okay, Dr. Heller, now by the way, you're both periodontists. Correct. What's your role in the practice? I mean, do you do well, the same stuff? Yeah, basically we do uh, the same procedures. Uh, we take care of people. We're doing implants all the time. Um, it's something that... Um, we do other forms of, of treatment as well. But like what? Well, in the past, we've done a lot of cosmetic, gum, treating gum disease, cosmetic treatment. Uh, but what's really nice now is with implants, we can remove teeth and put teeth in uh, almost at the same time. Okay, now your background and training. Uh, you both teach uh, your professors. Tell me about that. Well, it was interesting. When I first came to town, Randy, I came into the practice. Dr. Versman had been there for a long time. I started the uh, kind of at the at that time and I really didn't have any people to, to treat. You know, okay. I had all this good knowledge. I went to school, you learn a lot about implants, a lot about dentistry, and I didn't have any patients. So what I did at that point was I started at the school uh, teaching some of the undergrad students, the dental students. Yeah. And uh, I've continued that throughout the years, even to this day. I go once a week, uh, one morning every week, and uh, teach in the perio department, doing surgery, uh, impl dental implants and whatever else is needed over there. Okay, so, so I understand this correctly. The periodontist places the the implant, the titanium root in the in the mouth, and then you have another dentist, like a general dentist, that will put the tooth structure on. That's how uh, we do it. At, at, in our office, we've had the opportunity to work with some wonderful dentists uh, who are really great at what they do. What really our expertise is is in the surgical phase. And so it's nice. It's really great for the patient. They get the opportunity uh, to see us to do the actual placement of the dental implant, which is really kind of a benign procedure. Okay. And then they get the opportunity to work with their general dentist, whose expertise is doing the cosmetics. So uh, the beauty of it, Randy, is they get the benefit of everybody's expertise. Now, do, people, do people need to see a, or get a referral from their general practitioner, uh, general dentist, before they see you, or can they call you directly? How well, does that work? a lot of our patients, Randy, they, they, they are referred by referring dentists um, who want us to place those implants. but. Many of our patients call directly and we're very happy to see them and to work with their dentist or to refer them to some of the high quality people that we have the opportunity to share responsibilities with and so it's great. It, it's yeah. also interesting too because we do get patients that will send their friends or family and that's always nice as well because we get the opportunity to help them. Now you patient. don't look like a dentist especially. Well, did you always know you wanted to be a dentist? I asked that to every yeah. practitioner on the show. You know what, I did. Um, Is that right? Years ago, in about probably ninth grade, I had an opportunity to go volunteer as part of our school program, ninth grade. Okay. And it's funny because I remember at that point going to uh, down to the dental school for a couple of weeks, volunteering. I thought I had this great big job. Yeah. Really, it was nothing. But the funny part is, is now that I've been teaching there all these years, I have this recollection of these people there that look so old. Yeah. And now I'm miles beyond uh, in age what those guys are. But That's I've a, got him beat, Randy. I okay. wanted to be a dentist since fifth grade. Is that right? All my life. Uh, practically all we my just life. Knew you just do you want to be there. I mean, you both love this? I mean, you like doing this? Love what we do. We have a passion for it. We have a passion for the profession and most importantly for our patients. Now, we've invited you on the show to talk about dental implants. And you say, in all areas of dentistry, probably the happiest group of patients. Why is that? Oh, because we, we're able to change people's lives, Randy. I mean, I'm telling you, it is so gratifying. People actually walk out of the dental office with hugs because we've been able to give them their self-esteem back, their comfort in chewing. We've been able to 
uh, give them a beautiful cosmetic smile and confidence that they can chew and eat anything that they want. And Is that the, right though? I mean, I mean, they're strong, these dental implants. You can chew whatever. Unbelievable. Okay. They are so strong. It is something. Let me just give you an example. All right. I brought a little model here and it has two implants that help hold in a denture, Randy. I'd like you to pull that off for okay. me. Okay. Well, my hand, let's see. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. isn't it? Is this upper or lower? That is a lower, lower. and that's where people So just two implants. At a minimum, two implants can give people stability. They can eat anything they want. I was born and raised in the Midwest, Randy, and corn <laughs> on the cob is my favorite. And people can eat corn on the cob. They can eat apples. They can do anything. Actually, it's funny because it's one of the things that they always ask us, can I eat steak? Can I eat yeah. corn? Can I eat these things? And you really never realize that they couldn't eat that before. I mean, it's really interesting because we don't think like that. If you have all your teeth, you're able to generally chew and eat whatever you want. What are the age ranges of these patients that you see? Anywhere from 16 all the way up to 97. That's the oldest patient. 97. Now, why would a 97-year-old want to get go through that process? Well, because 97-year-old uh, patient that came in that I had opportunity to treat, he had all of her teeth but broke a tooth and did not want to wear a removable partial. We brought a model okay. to show you. This is a removable partial, excuse me, Randy. All right. Um, and it has hooks on it that clasp on the teeth. It tends to weaken the teeth, and it also isn't very cosmetic. And this woman did not want to wear something as obtrusive as this, and so we were able to place one implant to replace that so broken tooth. So 98 year old. Unbelievable. And she's still doing beautifully. She's about 101 right now and still comes in to see us and we still get the hugs from her all the time. I have a 73 year old mother and she says to me, uh, you know, I, I told her I'm right. going to interview you guys and, she, and she's been in a dancer since she's 30. So she's, uh, or 28 and she's 73. She says, I'm way too old. I've been not told true. I'm too old for dental implants. Absolutely not. I mean, I mean is that a say, common? Uh, it is very common. People don't believe that they may be candidates that at one time they lost their teeth due to gum disease. They think their gums are weak. The gums have very little to do with it, Randy. It's the bone that holds in the teeth. And almost everybody has enough bone that they can have an implant placed. And the neat thing is people are overwhelmed how easy it is to go through the procedure. Okay. There's well, pain though. I mean, it's very painful. Pain is just something our patients don't complain about. It, it amazes me even to this day, as many implants as we've done over the years, that we just don't get anybody complaining about it. It's, um, it's something that they'll take some ibuprofen. But is that take, the number one fear, by the way? Pain? They don't want to go through pain. I, I, absolutely. I think that's the greatest fear that keeps people from going to the dentist in general. And I always tell people my don't patients, like going to the dentist still. Is that correct? That is correct, but it's it's unfortunate because dentistry has changed so dramatically. So today, it is a very comfortable environment, and we work very hard to listen to our patients, to understand what their concerns are, and to overcome those so that they can go ahead and have this treatment, which they will absolutely love for the rest of their lives. Because implants, although not always, not 100%, we expect them to last forever. That's how so great they So do they, they fall out? No. No. On a really Any stats way. on that, by the way? Yes. Nationally? Yes. Probably 97, 98% success. It's really tremendous. So what are the different categories of dental implant patients you see? Well, probably one of the more common ones is the, the patient that's lost one, uh, one or two teeth. Okay. Uh, and what's happened in the past, Randy, is they didn't have the options of dental implants. And so at that point, they had to go through what we call uh, a bridge or another restoration, where what would, they would do is cut down teeth on uh, the right and left side, they'd grind them down and then glue on teeth on both sides. That was great, patients liked that. But the reality of it is, is that they just didn't last. The average uh, studies would show eight to 12 years of, of success. And so then it became kind of a snowballing effect in that. I mean, is that where it starts, by the way, you lose one tooth? Then it, slowly things happen? It, yeah, it really can. Is yes. your hunch or theory or maybe it's a, a, a fact that, that by losing that one that, uh, or, or by putting in an implant, maybe you could I stop use an analogy, that loss? Randy, it's like a brick wall. And if huh. you take a brick out of the middle of the wall and don't replace it, then the mortar starts to break. And pretty soon a few more bricks come out. And it does Is snowball. that a realistic uh, comparison though? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it is. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely Randy. Why, and, Why? Well, the problem is, is when you do a bridge, as Doug described, which used to be the ideal treatment and the only really good option before implants, people would get decay under those bridges and lose the teeth. They would get root, have to have root canals. The bridges would break. So today, we don't have to touch the adjacent teeth. We can leave that enamel perfect. Okay. And, and so we just 
put an implant in the one or two areas where the teeth are missing and the solid, strong, healthy teeth, we leave those alone. And those teeth then hopefully will last for the rest of the okay. patient's life. The other beauty is it keeps a one tooth problem a one tooth problem. So you don't get a three tooth problem or a four tooth problem years later. Another category, Randy, is the patients that have lost multiple teeth. And so what they had, what Kenny showed earlier was the partial denture. And that replaced a lot of teeth. But the problem with that is it's removable, it's got something that goes over the palate, it's not as comfortable, uh, they get food underneath it, uh, they have a difficult time chewing with it, so they take it out when they're on at dinner, and it leads to a lot of different issues from a social, okay. psych, psychosocial level. So the beauty is now we can replace the partial denture with one or two implants, uh, and then okay, they don't so have to the wear it. Snowball from happening. Correct. As you say. Exactly, Randy. I mean, that's what we're talking about because we talked about the bridge and how over time it can fail and lead to the loss of more teeth. Now, unfortunately, a lot of patients they go to their dentist and their teeth are at a stage where they cannot be saved. It's not worth putting the time, the money, um, the effort into trying to save hopeless teeth, and so they need to have all their teeth removed, whatever are remaining, and then they need to have either a denture or implants. I brought along uh, something that I really want to show your viewers, Randy. Because what I am I looking at there? What is that? Well, this here is a normal dentition. It has all the teeth and all of the bone. Bottom teeth, okay. And, and what happens, yeah, right. this is the bottom jaw. And what happens over time as teeth are removed, nature no longer is, is aware that the bone has to remain. So it starts to shrink and it atrophies. So the bone shrinks. I just want to make sure I have this right. Correct. Because there is no pressure from the teeth on the bone. The, the bone starts The like bone dissolving. was put there to hold the teeth. When the teeth are removed, the okay. bone shrinks. Very similar when you have a leg in a cast, you take the cast off, your muscles have atrophied. Well, as the teeth are removed, the bone starts to shrink. Okay. And over time, we get patients coming in, they have what we call a pencil thin ridge. It is so small, Randy, and the unfortunate part is, it exposes nerves in the jawbone and becomes very painful. So where do they keep their dentures? In their pocket? in their purse, they don't keep them in their mouth, it's too uncomfortable. So is it too late at that point? Absolutely not. That's okay. the beauty of the implants. We can put in two, four, six implants. They can have a removal prosthesis, they can have a permanent prosthesis that they don't have to take out. And so that's why it's, it's so rewarding for us to be able to help these kinds of people. You say the denture wearer does not know what they're missing. Well, one Elaborate other, on one that. One other thing before we okay. move on. You know, we've all seen that greeting card with the guy whose face, he, he pulls his lower lip way up over to his nose. Oh, yeah. You know, so cosmetically, preserving the bone is a big, big, big because what? Your benefit face to the patients. sinks in. Oh, yeah, terribly, yeah. terribly. And so okay. the neat thing about implant restorations is you preserve or recreate cosmetics. You can design the prosthesis to look so natural, not fake. People cannot even tell that these are artificial teeth. And again, these people, they gain their confidence, their self-esteem, and then go out into the world and act like they did back when they were 25, 30 Just years old. Just because they had their teeth back. Absolutely. I mean, you because know Because they're chewing and eating and... You can tell we're enthusiastic about yeah. this because yeah. it changes their lives for such a positive manner. And sometimes they're better than their original teeth anyhow. Well, if it's as good as you say that it is, well, you know, and, and going into this interview, 20 plus million Americans wearing dentures, why aren't they all doing this? Because they don't know what's available. Okay. Are, we Fair. talked a little bit about fear. They don't realize that it is very easy to go through this. And we like to talk to patients ahead of time. So consult, they just they go in, that's where it starts. Well, the other fear I think too is cost. They think that they're in order to replace all their teeth, they gotta replace each tooth with one implant. That's just right. not the case. Okay. You know? We're gonna take a quick break, by the way. Okay. It's good stuff. I want to know more about the process. What happens on day one? How does somebody become a candidate? How soon do they find out? Uh, okay. Downtime, etc. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Up next, uh, more about what you need to know about dental implants. We'll be right back.